the key issue is, I, I, I think we can really make it a lot simpler. Is Christ a man right now or is Christ a spirit creature? Would, would you agree that if the Bible speaks on that issue, then we really solve the whole problem about Christ's resurrection? Well, not necessarily, um, because when the apostles, when Paul, for example, was, was reasoning with various ones, um, often he was referring back to Jesus, um, who had been a man. Um, in fact, the in, in, in a prophecy in Daniel, it speaks about the Son of Man. That's an expression that's used quite a lot, and it's it's really with reference to Jesus giving up his his spirit form and being fully human, not just um, a spirit creature that materialized a human body, but being fully human and relating related to us in that in that way. So you know we've got to be careful with the use of of, of man in the scriptures because it doesn't necessarily mean that it's referring to a physical body of flesh and blood. I, I I just repeat my my question to you: If the Bible were to speak emphatically, stating that Christ is right now in the year twenty twenty two, either a man or a spirit creature, wouldn't that put the issue to rest? Well, I think it would depend on the context of the verse. Right. I mean, for example, um, uh, in, in John 1, in verse 14 and 18, uh, it speaks about the word becoming flesh. Um, it speaks about him being an only begotten son from a father. In verse 18, it says, No man has seen God at any time. That's a reference to the Father, not to the Son. Yeah, no man has seen God, that's right, to the Father at any time. The only begotten God who is at the Father's side is the one who has explained him. So there's a reference to to Jesus at the Father's side. And of course, when John wrote uh, his letter here, it was well after Jesus' uh, resurrection. So he, he's spoken of as being in a godlike position. Um, this, this is not really relevant to the resurrection. Um, do you mind if I just start over? I have four verses which clearly state that many decades after Christ's resurrection, Christ is a man. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that settle the issue that Christ rose as a man if the Bible states that after his resurrection, decades after his resurrection, Christ is a man? What, what, what verses did you have in mind? Well, before I go to those, I'd like to mention Acts 2.31, which says of Christ, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. Now, why didn't his flesh see corruption? Because Jesus was raised from the dead in a material, fleshly body. How does your Bible read in Acts 2.31? It says that he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he forsaken in the grave, nor did his flesh see corruption. So when it says, you talked about Jesus being in the tomb for three days and his body rotting, but the Bible here says, it's taken me a while to find this verse, his body did not see corruption. Acts 2.31 uh -huh. yeah. So his body his body didn't see corruption so obviously that body must have been resurrected surely Well, um, you know, Jehovah would have disposed of that body when they went into the tomb well, there's nothing there apart from mm. bandages Well, because so. the body was resurrected <laughs> If, if you if you believe the body was destroyed by Jehovah, you need to show me a verse that says that. It's, it's no good just just making wild statements and assuming I'm going to accept it because you say it. You need to you need to prove everything from the Bible, giving me chapter and verse. Um, yeah. You, I believe I've read somewhere in Jehovah's Witness literature that the body dissolved into gases, and then it it oh, was I'm destroyed. Not aware of that. Not aware. 
I'll, I I'll cannot remember where I read that. I mean, there's about a quarter of a million pages on JW.org. So one of those quarter of a million pages talks about his body being destroyed and Jehovah um, wiping away that body, which was dissolved into gases and disappeared. If that's the case, which, which Bible verse says that? Because Acts 2, 31 says, I'll now look at the New King James, he, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades. That's a reference to First Peter. Uh, right, and then it says, nor did his flesh see corruption. Yeah. So if his flesh didn't see corruption, it was because that physical body was resurrected from, from the dead in harmony with what John 2, 19 to 22 says. Remember, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And mm -hmm. then verse 21, John 2, 21, but he was speaking of the temple of yeah. his body. So he obviously rose up in the same body that he died in, surely. Well, no, because the scriptures clearly say that flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that Jesus... Again, you must, give the, you must give the chapter and verse, and you must read the passage rather than just paraphrase it to me. Because when people paraphrase the Bible, they can make it mean anything they want. That verse is talking about fallen, unredeemed, sinful flesh and blood. It's 1 Corinthians 15.50. That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ because he didn't have... He, he 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 didn't have a sin nature, did he? But it has everything to do with Jesus because the passage in First Corinthians fifteen mentions Christ quite a lot. But you need to read it. You need to read it and show it to me and show where well, it it says that. Please. Yeah, let's go to First Corinthians yeah. fifteen then, shall we? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I don't wish to be difficult, but um. You know, I you must give the reference for the Bible and actually read it. Um, but I think you'll find if you read the whole verse, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. It's talking about sinful, fallen human beings like Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot. They can't inherit the kingdom of God. So... There's quite a lot in First Corinthians 15, actually, just kind of looking at the context of it. So in, um, in verse 35, Paul asks the question, someone will say, how are the dead to be raised up? With what sort of body are they coming? Um, you unreasonable person, what you sow is not made alive unless first it dies. Um, uh, verse 38, God gives it a body just as he has pleased and gives to each of the seeds its own body. And then he says, not all flesh is the same flesh. There's one of mankind, there's another of flesh of cattle, another flesh of birds, another of fish, um, which we don't dispute, different types of uh, flesh. Verse 40 says there are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. So we know that angels are spirit form. No, it's talking about the, it's, it's talking about the, the planets in verse 40, not angels. Well, he does go on to speak about the planets in uh, verse 41. So, so the context the glory for, of the sun is... So the context for verse four. 40 is verse 41. He's talking about planets, which is unrelated to human beings. Um, so in verse 42, it goes on to say, so it is with the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised up in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised up in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised up in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised up a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual one. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living person. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, verse 46. Where spiritual is not first.
first, what is physical is first, after it, what is spiritual. The first man is from the earth and made of dust, the second man is from heaven. Like the one made of dust, so too are those made of dust, and like the heavenly one, so too are those who are heavenly. And just as we have borne the image of the one made of dust, we will bear also the image of the heavenly one. But I tell you this, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom, nor does incorruption inherit incorruption. So if you're saying that Jesus had no sin in his body, which I completely agree with, um, no problem there at all. But the the apostles, the disciples, um, who also had the hope of going to heaven were sinful. So, um, sorry, what is your point? About... I, I don't understand. Could you just make one point that I can understand and that I can respond to? You're making numerous points. You've read a large part of scripture. What on earth are you talking about? Can you just get to the point? Because I, I don't understand you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. Well, Thanks. With the, the main thrust of this verse here is that flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. Okay? Right, so you're dealing with uh, verse 50. Are, are you dealing yeah. with verse 50? Then, 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 then verse 50 and read the passage. I'll, I'll read it. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Okay? Yeah. What's your point? So, uh, those that are in the heavenly kingdom, such as uh, Jesus and his disciples who were raised up, um, cannot be in flesh and blood because it says they cannot inherit God's kingdom. It doesn't say heavenly kingdom. You read that into the text. It says kingdom of God. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now, the context is, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. It's talking about fallen, unredeemed people. People who die hating Christ. Think of Hitler in his bunker in 1945. Hating, hating Christ. Sending men, women and children to the gas chambers. Right? He, he, he died shooting himself with a revolver in the temple. He committed suicide. He died hating Christ. He's not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's got nothing to do with heaven. It's the kingdom of God. Let's read on. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That's a synonym for death. But we shall all be changed. Right? Changed is a reference to the glorification of the human body. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, for the last trumpet, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. That's a reference to the end of time. Christ's second coming is referred to in Thessalonians as the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. When it says changed, it's talking about the glorification of the human body for Christian saints. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. What that means is that we come out of our mother's womb under the curse of sin. That's why we age and we die. But at the resurrection, the resurrected glorified saints of God will be incorruptible because they will be in glorified human bodies that have no sin, that aren't under the curse of sin. So verse 54, so when this corruptible, the body we have at the moment, has put on incorruption after Armageddon, at Christ's second coming, we will be glorified, or the dead will rise up in glorified human bodies if they're Christians. And this mortal must put on immortality, then will be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. So verse 50 is talking about the wicked dead, not the righteous dead. It's saying that the wicked dead, Ahab, Jezebel, Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot, Joseph Mengele, who did medical, ex medical experiments on living people in Auschwitz, people like that who died hating Christ won't enter the kingdom of God. That, 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 that's all verse 50 is saying. You, you can't read into it more than that is there and then build an entire doctrine upon that verse. And I forgot um, why we were talking about this in the first place now. Um, well, obviously flesh and blood is mortal. Flesh and blood corrupts. No, it's not! We've just... We've, flesh and blood is corruptible, it's mortal. Right? 
But we've read in verse 51 that for the Christian saints, they're going to be changed in verse 51. Verse 52, in a moment in the twinkling of the eye at the last trumpet, that's Christ's second coming, the dead will be raised incorruptible. They're not going to be raised as spirits. They're going to be raised in the same bodies that they died in, but they will be incorruptible human body and we will be changed. Changed means glorified human bodies. So it's talking about a promise for the saints of God. They're going to be raised up from the dead in glorified physical human bodies that aren't under the curse of sin. And these are called glorified. This is called the glorification of the saints. Romans 8.30. It, it, it's so clear in verse 30, 44, which you, you read. It is sown a natural body. It is raised. That's talking about the resurrection from the dead at Christ's second coming. A spiritual body. Now, spiritual is plumaticos. It's not spirit. It doesn't say it will be raised a body made of spirit. Spiritual is plumaticos. And spirit, pneuma, is not used in this verse. Body is soma. And Robert Gundry did a study on the word soma in the New Testament. Whenever it's applied to human beings, it always means a physical body. It cannot mean a body made out of spirit. There's no use of soma anywhere in the New Testament that's applied to human beings that means a body of spirit. So 1 Corinthians 15 44 says that the dead will be raised in physical bodies that are plumatic or soma that are spirit that are spirit dominated. Um, Yeah, so um, the context for verse 50, that well, one, so the context for verse 50 to verse 54 is drawn from verse 44. Well, what see, does plumaticos well, mean? Or what does soma mean? Yeah, you see what, what I find difficult with your understanding of Jesus being raised in flesh and blood but 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 my yeah, understanding is the standard position of the Christian Church for two thousand years. Catholic, Protestant, and Eastern Orthodox groups all agree with what I have yeah. said. I'm not coming out with some weird understanding that only I believe. This is the historic okay. doctrine of everybody in the Christian Church, Protestant, Catholic, and Orthodox for two thousand years. If you're going to but disagree you see, what, with, what we're interested in really is is what the scriptures teach. It isn't really what church dogma right. teaches, because we know right. Then explain spiritual body. Has, has been you know, <laughs> far from ideal. Right. Um, then then explain plumatic or soma, spiritual body, in one Corinthians fifteen forty four. Uh, and well, I'm I'm not claiming to be a Greek uh, scholar. I'm afraid. Well. And then I'd have to do a bit more. I don't, know, I research. no, no, I, I don't wish to discuss the same topic. We shouldn't have discussed this topic. I bitterly regret it. I wish we'd chosen a new topic. Yeah. I, I've yeah. been down this route with a seven day Adventist. Every week we did the same topic. He didn't do adequate research. So next week we did the same topic again. And he didn't do adequate research. So next week we did the same. And we did that for three months. And it drove, it drove me mad. Yeah. It's best to deal with yeah. one topic. And then finito benito, I don't want to look at it again. We'll go on to a different topic. Can I give you those four scriptures that I mentioned? Uh, by all means, by all yep. means. Okay, yep. um, we'll go to Hebrews first. These show that post-resurrection, Jesus is, is still a man today. So I'll go to Hebrews 6.20. And this is talking about Jesus as high priest. And I want you yep. to notice it says he's high priest forever. Hebrews 6.20, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. So my question here is, is Jesus high priest forever, which would mean he's high priest right now in the year 2020? Absolutely, yes. Right. Go back a chapter to chapter 5, verse 1, and we find that the high priest was taken from among men. The high priest wasn't taken from among women, and the high priest wasn't taken from angels or spirit creatures. The high priest was only taken from among men. The word there, 
I believe, I don't have an interlinear, is Anthropos. So Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1, For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Was the high priest taken from among men, not women, not angels? Uh, of course, yes. Jesus, Jesus came as high priest, and Paul says that in Hebrews. Right. But post-resurrection, Jesus is of the priesthood of Melchizedek, which in Hebrews yeah. 6.20, he is a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So Christ yeah. is a high priest right now in the year 2020, according to this verse, Hebrews 6.20, because forever would include yeah. the year 2022. Yet the yeah. high priest was taken from among men. So high, high yeah. priest Jesus must be a human being right now. Because he cannot, uh, he cannot operate in the function of he cannot operate in the function of high priest if he's a spirit creature, or if he is a woman. Well, what what does a high priest do? Well, the Bible says that Jesus has sat down on the right hand of God, so he's finished his high priestly work of um, atoning for sins. He would he would simply be working as mediator now. I, th I think I've got well, that right. It is rather complicated, and I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, he's serving as well, isn't he? As high priest, does not mean he's serving as a physical body of flesh and blood as high priest? Well, you you I mean, have to because you can't be a high priest unless you're a man, and you can't be a man unless you're a human being. It says in Hebrews five one, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed yeah. for men in things pertaining to God. So the high priest yeah. was taken from among men. You cannot be a high priest if you're a woman or if you're an angel. So if Christ is an angel now, if he's a spirit creature, he can't function as high priest because the high priest has to be a man. And Christ is a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 6.20. Yeah, I, I think you're seeing more in that verse than there is. Well, what is there there? Because... Well, it's his role, isn't it? Jesus is acting in the role of high priest. It doesn't mean he has to be a, have a body of flesh and blood as high priest, as a physical man. But he's in the role of, of high priest. That's the, the role he's been appointed and will continue to help raise um, mankind to perfection during a thousand years. What do you mean um, he's in the role of the high role. priest? It doesn't mean that he is a physical man. I, I think you're taking that verse a little bit too far. What do you mean he's in the role of high priest? What do you mean by that? Well, the, the high priest, you know, acted to um, help those that approached you know, him and he that there were sacrifices that the high priest made on a regular basis and it was to atone for sin. So, what do you mean you know, by Jesus. the role of high priest? You, you said, you almost, it's as if you're saying Christ is not a high priest, but he's in the role of high priest. No, 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 he is a high priest. Oh, he no, is a high priest. Don't, don't well, if he's a high priest, he's, he is, if he's uh, a high priest, high he's priest. a, if he's a high priest, he's a man. Because you can't operate as a high priest unless you are a man. Women can't operate why? as high priests. Why can't and you angels. operate as a high priest Pardon? unless you're a man? Pardon? Why, why can't you operate as a high priest? Why, uh, why can't you? Why can't I operate as what? Just what you... why, why can't Jesus operate as a high priest? If, I, if he's, I didn't if he's, say that. Um, in a spirit form. Sorry, I, 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 gosh, I, I, I can't follow you. I'm sorry. What, 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 are you, what are you, you saying? Too, Sorry? I say I'm having difficulty following your yeah. line of reasoning too. I think because we're uh, both tired. I got very little sleep because of the heat last night and I, I, I yeah. find it difficult to think. Yeah. It says in Hebrews 5.1 that the high priest has to be a man. Christ is high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 6.20. Yeah. So therefore... Christ is operating as high priest today, in the year 2022, because of Hebrews 6.20, he's a high priest forever, and forever would include okay. the year um, yes. yeah, I'm with 2022. You there, yeah. um, when it says forever, it means from his, I guess from his um, um, yeah. death on the cross onwards. 
Now Hebrews 5.1 says the high priest was taken from among men. They didn't take the Jewish high priest from among women and they didn't appoint an angel. They didn't choose an angel to be the high priest. It was a man. Hebrews 5.1 For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God. Wouldn't this mean that as the high priest has to be a man and Christ is a high priest forever, therefore Christ has to be a man forever in order to um, fulfil the function of high priest. Sorry if I'm not very clear. No, no, no I, I perfectly understand um, what, what you're saying there. It's just that I don't see that Jesus would have to be a physical flesh and blood creature in order to serve as high priest. Which which verse says that? Which verse says you don't have to be a physical flesh and blood creature to serve as high priest? You need to show me a verse because I'm not interested in what you reason or what you think. Yeah. I'm only is re interested yeah. in what the text says. Yeah, you see, um, I, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree, really. Because All right. our, now, our views on this are... Uh, are very very different and your understanding of bible verses is is different to our understanding of of bible verses um you know as we said before jesus was made a little lower than the angels why would he still you, you keep than the you angels? keep doing this all the time okay. man it's so annoying. You keep paraphrasing the Bible. You don't reference the verse and you don't read the verse. You're now quoting from Hebrews 2. Please stop doing this. If, you, if you're going to mention the Bible verse, give the chapter, give the verse and read it. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not <laughs> telling you not to read yeah. the Bible. By all means, read the Bible to me. But please stop paraphrasing the Bible. How would you feel if you spoke to a Mormon and a Mormon says, oh, well, of course, you know, the Bible says there's God's many and there's Lord's many. So, you know, the Bible also says that there's many gods and Jesus is one of many gods. And the Bible also says, you know, blah, blah, blah. Joseph Smith is a prophet. It says uh, you are a prophet, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> and, and he just keeps giving you paraphrase after paraphrase after paraphrase. And it, it's all slightly changed to accord with Mormon doctrine. It's extremely annoying. Just give me one verse at a time. Give me the chapter and verse and read it from the Bible. Don't paraphrase it to me. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to be um, difficult. I'm not trying to be rude to you, sir, or, or, or bad tempered. Um, but I, I had this for three months with a Seventh-day Adventist. He used every trick in the book on me. He never got to the point. He was like the Mexican jumping bean. And, and you know, he, he would continually paraphrase scripture. When I actually read it, he was actually misquoting the scripture. He was reading it out of context. Um, which I think that, you, you know, you were doing at 1 Peter 3.18. In your paraphrase, you seem to imply that Jesus was raised as a spirit. And the text doesn't say that. Yeah, uh, it says in the spirit or by the spirit, not as a spirit. That's why we need to read the actual verse of the Bible. All right, well, let's abandon yeah. Hebrews. Let's abandon that. 1 Timothy 2.5. Did I mention this the last time? I think I did. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.5. Um, let's make this the last one, shall we? Okay, a read from verse 4. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Oops, hang on. Can I just get there? Yeah. First Timothy chapter 2. Yeah. And first, first verse, four. verse 4, did you say? Yeah. I'll read 4 and 5. Apparently okay. the verbs come from verse 4. And the verbs are in the present tense. So 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Anthropos, Christ Jesus. Paul is writing in about AD 60, about 30 years after the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. And he refers to Christ in the present tense as man, Anthropos. So I assume mm -hmm. from that that Christ, when Paul was writing in AD 60, was a man. Yeah, is, is Paul not just reasoning, is he not just reasoning about um, the, the Christ here? And, you know, the, I mean, Jesus, 
had come to earth as a man, as a as a person of of flesh and blood, uh, a physical person, and um, he, he's just reasoning here that that was what had happened. He's speaking here, Jesus, as a man, but you know, I'm not really following. I'm not really following that you believe that. I can't see how that equates to Jesus being flesh and blood. Well, a man has flesh and blood. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, he, he, the, the tenses are present tense. Verse 4, who desires all men to be saved. That's present tense. It's not yeah, God yeah. will desire in the future all men to be saved, or God used to desire men to be saved, but now he doesn't want people to be saved anymore. It's present tense. Who desires all men to be saved present tense, and to come to the knowledge of the truth, present tense. Now, I'm not a Greek scholar, and I've been corrected by someone who knows more than me that the the um, the verbs are in verse 4, so verse 5 takes the context from verse 4. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, We're still talking in the present tense, the man Christ Jesus. So Paul refers to Christ as the man Christ Jesus in the present tense in about AD yeah. 60, 30 years after the crucifixion. Uh-huh. So Christ is a man when Paul wrote to Timothy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, still, don't, I still don't get that, but that's uh, referring to Jesus as a glorified human being. Right. Christ is a glorified a human glorified being. Agreed. Agree, agree. Christ is a glorified human being. The word man is anthropos. Men have bodies of flesh and bones. So, how, how does a physical man of flesh and bone exist in a spiritual domain? I mean, this means that Christ can no longer see God, because no man can see God and live. And you're doing it again. You're doing it repeatedly. Which verse are you reading from? And are you paraphrasing or are you reading the verse accurately? Which verse are you reading from? Please don't do this well, to me. Well, you no, know, no. The, the, the thing is that when 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 we're in discussion, you said it's obvious that no verses will will come to mind. No, you you, you give the well reference to the verse so I can follow you then, to see that you're quoting the verse accurately and not. Yeah. Not paraphrasing it with a little twist, like my Seventh Day Adventist pastor, who did that well, all the time John for three months and drove me mad. John one eighteen is the verse. John one eighteen. What was the point you were making there? Well, if Jesus has a body of flesh and blood, physical eyes, he cannot see God. Now I don't know what on earth you're talking about. John one eighteen. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. What's your point? Well, um, my point is that if Jesus, nobody can see God. No man can see God. Correct. Yes. No physical man can see God, right? Well, the Book of John is written to human beings. So when John okay. wrote the book of John and he said no one has seen God at any time, the context is would be his readers who are human beings. We haven't seen God the Father at, at, at any time. God the Father okay. is invisible to us. That's the point that John is making in John 1.18. Yes, because we are physical beings. Doesn't, doesn't. So if, if Jesus is, is, now, is now a glorified physical being, uh, in a physical form, with physical eyes, he can't see God. But well, you need to prove that. Well, that's the, the, the Bible does not comment on that at all. It doesn't make any any uh, statement on that either way. But you're making an assumption, and if you make an assumption, you're welcome to make an assumption. Just prove it to me from the Bible. Show me a verse that says that. And if you can't do it, I don't want to hear what you've got to say. Because there are plenty of people running around with all sorts yeah. of opinions. Christadelphians, yeah. Mormons, extreme Pentecostals, um, yeah. the Unification Church. They've got all sorts of people with all sorts of weird views. 
Now, I don't really care about what people think or how they feel or their weird views. Just prove it to me from the Bible. And, and I've lost the, the train of where we, where we were. The context in John 1.18 is that John's readers, none of John's readers have seen God the Father. John is not saying that the Son has never seen the Father. Um, listen, uh, I'm going to need to say cheerio at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, we've been having a chat for about an hour now. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it sounds like you have already been on to JW.org and you've, you've had a lot of opportunity to do... I've been there for hundreds of hours. And, I've been um, there for hundreds and hundreds of hours since well before the lockdown. Oh right. Yeah. yeah, since since yeah, about yeah, two thousand and fifteen. Yeah, you're 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 yeah. very well read and that's that is, that is lovely. Um but I think we're gonna have to agree to disagree um on many of the things here because you've obviously got your viewpoint. But but you have your viewpoint. And You're using a conversation stopper. You're saying I have my viewpoint as if that's some crime or some sin on my behalf. It's not a crime for me to have my viewpoint because you have your viewpoint too. If you say I'm very entrenched in my viewpoint, I could say the same to you. You're very entrenched in your viewpoint. But at least I reach out to you and I try to use the scriptures. And I try to dialogue with you from the scriptures. Yes, and, yeah. and hopefully we've been able to do that uh, from both sides. Yes, if we talk again, I don't wish to discuss this topic again. I'd rather deal with an, a different topic, yeah, Chapter 13. Um, I'm not really wanting to pursue any more conversations. Um, it's, okay. been, uh, it's been fine to, to chat with you on the subject, but okay. I don't really see any any point in any future conversations. So okay, then. I'm well, not wanting to run on... You know, like you said, the Seventh Day Adventists for three months. Uh, I don't really see any any point in endless debates. All right. Um, well, thank you very so much I'm for your time. Really wanting to, um, but I, I appreciate your original response, and, I, and I'm glad we've had the opportunity to have a chat. And uh, I wish you well. I wish you well too. Thank you very much indeed. Bye. Okay. Bye bye.